Falls are among the most common causes of serious work-related injuries and deaths. By understanding basic fall protection principles, you can greatly reduce the risk of a fall. In this video, we're going to talk about the hierarchy of fall protection, how to reduce the risk of falls, regulations and standards, and the components of fall protection systems, plus rescue and training requirements. Now, what do we mean by fall protection? Fall protection is what you do to eliminate fall hazards, to prevent falls, and to ensure that workers who may fall aren't injured. This is known as the fall protection hierarchy. In order to eliminate fall hazards, first you have to identify them. The types of hazards will vary from one workplace to another, but it is important for each employer to survey the workplace and fall hazards to create a fall protection plan. Employers are required by OSHA to set up a workplace to prevent employees from falling from overhead platforms, elevated workstation, or into holes in floors and walls. OSHA also requires that fall protection be provided at elevations of four feet in general industry workplaces, six feet in construction industry, 10 feet for scaffolds, and 15 feet for steel erection. The simplest way to eliminate risk is to eliminate the hazard. Cover or guard floor holes as soon as they're created. After hazard elimination comes prevention, such as guardrails. Guardrails are a passive system to prevent workers from reaching the hazard. If the hazard cannot be eliminated, the next best option is to use a personal fall restraint system to keep the workers away from the hazard. Unlike a personal fall arrest system, which is designed to stop a fall, a personal fall restraint system prevents a worker from reaching an unprotected edge, and thus prevents a fall from occurring. When a hazard cannot be eliminated, or a restraint system is not feasible, then a personal fall arrest system must be employed. A personal fall arrest system consists of an anchorage point, body wear or harness, and a connector. This is often referred to as the ABCs. Let's take a closer look at what makes a personal fall arrest system. Anchorage means a secure point of attachment for lifelines, lanyards, and deceleration devices. There are a wide variety of anchors ranging from passer anchor straps to beam trolleys, concrete embed, and roofing anchors. Always check the product manual to ensure the anchor you choose is suitable for your specific application. The main thing to consider is the placement of the anchor to a sound anchorage point. An anchor point must be able to support at least 5,000 pounds, or a two to one safety factor, roughly the weight of a standard sized pickup truck. If not, it's probably not a good anchor point to use. Now, let's look at body wear. Harnesses are available in a wide variety of styles and complexities, from the basic contractor style harness to elaborate padded harnesses. However, in choosing a harness, you first need to determine the D-ring configuration based on the fall protection requirement for the type of work you'll be performing. If basic fall protection is needed, a single D-ring harness should fit the bill, as your connector will attach to the back D-ring of the harness. However, if your application calls for more restraint or work positioning, a three D-ring harness should include side D-rings for attachment of positioning, and restraint lanyards. Another consideration is the environment where the harness will be used. Will the harness be exposed to arc flash hazards or welding spatter? Will it be used in harsh environments or need to be high vis? There are specialty harnesses for just about every job application. Lastly, you'll need a connector, which is anything that brings the anchorage and the harness together. Depending on the application, connectors include shock absorbing lanyards and self retracting lifelines, positioning and restraint lanyards, and vertical lifelines. Shock absorbing lanyards and self retracting lifelines serve to dissipate or limit the substantial amount of energy imposed on a worker during a fall event. During a fall event, a worker can free fall at a rate of 64 feet in as little as two seconds and can be subjected to catastrophic resting forces as much as 5,000 pounds without some sort of deceleration device. Deceleration devices slow the descent and limit resting forces to under 900 pounds. When choosing a lanyard or SRD, it's important to consider your application and calculate the distance of clear fall needed in order for the fall arrest system to activate and keep the worker from hitting the lower level. Typical clear fall calculations when connected to an overhead anchorage take into account the length of the shock absorbing lanyard, the deceleration distance, which is the maximum allowable amount of elongation that may pay out of an energy absorber upon activation during a fall event, harness stretch and dorsal D-ring shift, the height of the dorsal D-ring, then add a safety factor to account for other factors such as an improperly adjusted harness, actual worker height, or worker weight. In this example, the next lower level would need to be at least 17 and a half feet below the anchor point in order to safely protect the worker. Make sure to consult the product manual for clear fall calculation pertaining to the device you choose. Another consideration is swing fall. Swing fall occurs when the worker falls while not being directly beneath the overhead anchor point. This can cause the worker to swing into adjacent obstructions rather than dropping straight down. A critical, important, and often overlooked part of any fall protection plan is a rescue plan that outlines what to do after a fall event has occurred. Unfortunately, while waiting for rescue, suspension trauma is a real threat. Suspension trauma can be caused by any situation where a worker is forced to stay upright without the ability to use his legs or move, such as in a personal fall arrest system during a fall event. When prompt rescue can mean the difference between life and death, Local emergency services may not arrive in time. This is why it's critical to have a plan in place and train all workers on what to do in the event of a fall. 
Speaking of training, OSHA requires all workers to be trained on how to recognize fall hazards and no procedures to minimize hazards before they begin tasks which could expose them to a fall. For more information about fall protection or any Falltech products, visit us at falltech.com.